Hey guys, BJ the Brave here, back with some more Warforged content for you and following my last video where I just got very excited about the new ranking system. If you've not seen that video, definitely go and check that out next. It unveils essentially what the future of the game is in terms of how we play constructor play and I am very excited about it. Uh, this video, we're going to take a look at the August balance patch. Okay, so uh, as we know, we just came out of a very dominant meta from the Ultramarines and uh, EG have made a number of changes so I'm going to really go through this and I'm going to focus on I'm looking for things that are really going to make a difference to the game and that's kind of like the lens which I'm going to talk about them and um, what I'll do as well is flick between the actual news article and the actual current card so we can kind of compare and see how the uh, cards look so let's dive right on in okay so first and foremost we have got changes to the ultramarines and uh you know what let's just zoom in on this a bit there we go there we go uh, there we go um yeah let's start with the ultramarines because obviously the ultramarines have been pretty oppressive in the last season i did make a few decks that kind of counted or at least competed with the ultramarines um mainly swarm lord and grook uh but you know it it was just so much easier playing ultramarines and it was pretty broken so what have we got well the first offender was the predator annihilator and it says change the description to codex deal three damage to the enemy with the highest attack so basically we're just going from dealing four damage to three damage and the other change is that they've got rid of the armor so the annihilator is much easier to kill now um overall uh this is a good change in terms of getting rid of the most oppressive thing about the Ultramarines. It's a bad change in that it's a little bit lazy in that we already have a 7 drop that deals 3, uh, three damage to um, uh, to a unit. Obviously this can attack face though. Um, will it still be played? I'm not, I'm not sure. It, it may well. It's still pretty decent. Um, but it's definitely nowhere near the powerhouse that it was. So glad that they've obviously addressed the Predator. Probably not the the best it could have been, but it's not the worst either. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see. Rapid deployment uh, has increased from two to three. This is the card that makes everything uh, cheaper. I don't think this card will ever see play. To be honest with you, it wasn't in the top Ultramarine decks by the end of the season anyway at two. So changing it to three, um, I don't I don't see that we'll we'll see this being used. Uh, Battlefield Supremacy has gone from 3 to 5. Now, uh, for those who don't know, I mean, Battlefield Supremacy is obviously uh, the card that... Um, uh, it's obviously the card... Oh, it's, the game's just rebooting. Sorry, I was just going to show you. This is the one that makes the vehicle deck, right? Because this is the card that basically makes all of our vehicles cheaper. So, uh, currently, it is costing... Uh, three energy obviously uh, we are going up to five energy so uh, rapid deployment sorry gone we gone here we go battlefield supremacy lower the cost of vehicles in your hand and deck uh, by one draw a vehicle now in my opinion this going from three to five I think that is I think that kind of eliminates this as a as a as a card and potentially the vehicle deck as a whole like spending five energy to do nothing on that turn is way too much um i honestly don't think they needed to touch this card i think even ecclesiarch made a video and he, he specifically said do not touch this card because like this opens up the archetype and they've kind of um nerfed the wrong thing here I mean, if it had gone to four, maybe. But honestly, I, d I don't think this card was the problem. Um, I think, given the changes that they've made, the vehicle to the like, Annihilator and stuff, this is a double whammy. And I just don't think you're going to see vehicles. Uh, Primarius Tech Marine. Lower the melee attack from four to three and change the description to Codex. Give armor one and heal two to your vehicles instead of healing three. Yeah, I again, I don't think the Tech Marine was... 
um, necessarily, the, necessarily the problem. Obviously, once you combine this with things like the cars that give armor to your vehicles, it could, it could get a bit oppressive, but I don't think this one was really necessary. So another change that I'm a little bit like, eh, really? Like, it's still pretty good if you are running vehicles. Um, you'd still play this card, so it's not nerfed into oblivion like I think the Battlefield Supremacy is. But it's not it's not a great change, to be honest. Um, yeah, not really... Not actually that keen on any of these changes so far, um, in terms of the actual execution of them. So we'll see. The Outrider says change the description to flank, gain plus one melee. So it's basically plus one instead of plus two. I think this is this brings this thing a little bit more in line. It was it was insane for three energy and obviously only two energy once you'd used Battlefield Supremacy. Yeah, that's a good change overall. Um, I think that's a, a little bit more reasonable and sort of in line. Primus Invader. Now, this is a card that most definitely didn't need a change, and it's a change of description. Codex give one range to your vehicles this turn instead of a permanent buff. No idea why that's the change. I, I hate that change. Um, the permanent buff, it, brought, it added something in that it was like a snowball effect, so that even if it got dealt with, it had left something behind, whereas... Um, when are you ever going to have a... If you have a board state where you have multiple vehicles and you get to play this so they get a buff for one turn, you've already won the game. Like, you, you'd be so far ahead. I, I, yeah, another change. I, I don't particularly like this change. Storm Speeder, Hell Strike, lowering the health from 6 to 5. Yeah, I think that does make sense. Given that it's a flyer, and most opponents are going to have to deal with it uh, with their... They're going to have to hit the range damage, right? So, uh, at 5 energy, it was, it was actually pretty... Pretty offensive, actually, this card. Um, I think I think overall that might be a good change. Um, simple change, but pretty pretty decent. So yeah, I'm 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 not against that one. Last but not least, tactical insight has increased from zero to one. Now this card, this this change is massive, guys. Like I have to say, I really really don't like this change. Um, ignoring the fact that obviously last season was pretty horrific and oppressive uh it, it was because they had cards that you know the, the predator annihilator was just completely broken and yes you could abuse tactical insight but if the cards are right and in line then tactical insight is what makes playing ultramarines fun because this has a natural synergy at two energy with the codex ability right so to be able to um essentially uh uh play a unit go down to zero Tactical Insight, play your hero power. You know, that had a very natural synergy. And by making it cost three, you, you, by making it cost one, sorry, you now need to have, like, a, it's a really unnatural number. Like, it has a really, I think it's, like, lost the natural synergy that you had with things like the hero power and stuff. It'll still be okay, maybe, in Targaryus, where you can play the hero power in different levels. Um, you're essentially cheating one energy of mana instead of two. So I can understand that that's their thinking, but I really don't like this change. I think this was a hallmark of the personality of the Ultramarines. And one of the things I'll look out for when we do the changes is um, like gutting the actual personality of the faction. Like we've seen that with Tau, for example. I, I feel like it's lost up. It's not as, nowhere near as fun to play it. And so I really don't like this because it affects the kind of core personality of, of the Codex mechanic and... Um, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Maybe, maybe I'm like looking at this wrong, but for me, like this is this is not a good change. Um, so there we go. So that's the ultimate. So what what have we learned from that? I think ultimately, you know, we are not going to see the deck that was oppressive last season, right? That deck is gone. Um, so that's a good thing, I guess. Like we're going to have a fresh meta and everything, and that's fun. I'm just a bit worried. Um, I think I think we've lost the vehicle archetype. Quite frankly, I think. They've gone too heavy on that, and it's something about balancing that we're not quite getting here. Where um, we're not understanding like the exponential effect. Like when you change one thing, that's a, that's that's that affects obviously the deck. But when you change three, four things, the incrementally, the the the, the sum of all parts becomes way bigger. It becomes a way bigger nerf um, to the point of extinction. And I I really think the vehicles are have been hit hard here so uh, i think for ultramarines though they'll ultimately be all right because the 
Um, what you'll what we'll see instead is we'll go back to the zeal and the infantry deck, probably with Kalgar. And I think that deck will still be good. Um, definitely with the new ranking system, you could play Ultramarines and post a good score with that Marine deck, I'm pretty sure. But the vehicle Targaryen deck is dead in the water. All right, let's look at the Sautek Dynasty. First of all, the Undying Legions has gone from five to three. So guys, just to remind you, if you uh, uh, don't remember, the Undying Legions is the card that essentially makes your remnants uh, cost, uh, not cost, sorry, your remnants have shield. It was an interesting concept when this card changed and was designed this way. Uh, it used to be a completely different card. The thing is, no one's playing it at all, because for 5 energy, you're just never going to use this. And um, at 3 energy, it becomes a different story entirely. And I'm really interested to see now what this would look like in a in a kind of control deck. And not just Imatech, actually, you might um, have really good synergy with like a Nemesar control. Uh, just given that Nemesar has, can keep Remnants around longer right, as part of his ability. So uh, this is a really interesting change going down to three energy. I definitely think we're going to see this or at least going to see people testing it. It could be quite oppressive. It actually could be a bedrock for, for finally like tr for a true remnant deck, like a true build around like raising, which again is like leaning into the core personality of the Necron. So um, in, in, from a theme sense, it's a really good change. I'm, I'm a little bit anxious that it could become completely oppressive. I don't know that it, it is, but I'm just a little bit anxious about that. We shall see. I hope it isn't, but it's definitely going to be a really interesting season for the Necrons to test out that, uh, that change. So next up, we've got the Disruption Blades, which say give plus two melee attack to your units this turn, which they always did. But they say give plus three if they're Destroyer. Now, if you remember the Destroyer is the kind of um uh used to be what we called frenzy didn't it right uh it used to, so so the it's now called destroyer so um uh, most of these guys have really good melee attack and they get an extra buff so if you play that on this it becomes three so that's quite good guy like building on this archetype because it's the most underplayed archetype and trying to improve and strengthen it it's quite a nice little change I, does it? Do I think it will make the destroyer? There'll be a destroyer archetype build. I don't know. I I'm yet to really try that. So maybe that's something that I, we try. But I doubt it is enough to push it over the edge. But I, I really like the ideas here. So so far, it's two changes where like where the ultramarines. I don't like the ideas on pretty much any of the changes except maybe the outrider. Uh, the ideas behind the changes with Southtech on these two are both good. Um, you know, again, whether this card will actually be played, probably not. Whether destroyer builds will actually be good, probably not. But at least we're adding towards and we're trying to encourage people to, to try it out. Now, the Ghost Arc has seen a fairly significant stat increase. Its melee attack's gone up two and the range attack's gone up one. So we can see, uh, you know, if we look at the current cost, it's a three four. So basically, this is going to be now a five five. Um, I think this card now finally is a superb card like I think it's a really good card at seven um, I definitely definitely will be um, playing with the ghost arc and testing it uh, whether Necrons are going to be one of my four I'm not sure but they could well be you know um, it'll be working out what the correct Necron build is though because it might be the first season in a long time where we see Necrons like redesigned like more fundamentally, right? Like if you think about it, the Imatech controls being fairly similar for like 10 seasons now. <laughs> um, we know what we get, like uh, Oricon is the Scarab deck. I think we might see some fundamental changes and I'm really keen to see what Nemesar can do. And I think Ghost Arc and the previous card that we just talked about uh, is a big part of that. Uh, the next thing we've got is the death mark, which says lower the health from four to three and change the description to remnant sniper rally. If you control Nova tro troops, gain stealth. Now, this is a four drop currently, isn't it? Okay, so we go down to three health. Remnant sniper, it stays the same, but it can gain stealth. Now, that is a really good change, right? Like, that's pretty powerful, actually. 
Lower health from four to three. Yeah, sure. But if you can get stealth, a bit like the Eldar range, if you can get stealth and then actually, you're actually going to get the sniper thing off. I think you're going to see Deathmark played. I think that's actually a really good change. I think it will definitely be played. It's got Remnant too. So you could even raise it back up and I think it would get stealth again. Is that right? If you if you just used a stratagem to reanimate, would it get stealth again when it gets back up? Or is that not a rally effect when you get back up? Let me know in the comments. I can't remember how that interaction works when you get back up, whether you, whether it counts as rally or not. I don't think it does. I don't think it does, actually. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So you would only get the stealth once, but even with that, I still think that's a really, really positive change, and it leans into the kind of sniper thing. It makes more sense. Uh, yeah, another really good change for the Necrons. Next up, Implacable Cap Conqueror. Change the description to lower the cost of all troops in your deck by two draw troop. Now, this is a card that um, has long been um, uh, like a uh, one of those where you look at it every 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 Sunday afternoon when you're kind of bored and want to try something different. You think, oh, this card's good, and it, it never is. Um, and the reason why it never is is because it's just too slow, right? But the threat of this is phenomenal if you see your opponent play this you will poo yourself right because you're thinking oh my god everything's coming out cheaper um the fact that you draw a card is a nice halfway between like do you, should we used to say should this lower the cost of the cards in your hand maybe that would be too much but the fact that you now draw and i love that it says draw a troop not just draw a card so you will definitely get at least one troop in your hand that is discounted by two really really nice really nice I'm actually thinking I might experiment quite a bit with Necrons this season because I, I really like these changes and I think they're, they're not just building on architect. I think they might re help you redesign Necrons a little bit. Last but not least, the Hexmark Destroyer ability can now target Remnants and Spirit Stones. So it's the, you remember every time you uh, cast a spell, it basically does one AoE damage to four units. Well, it will target Remnants and Stones. So it should always have done that and um, this just it's almost like... Uh, It's almost like a bug fix in a way. Really good. Um, if I'm if I'm giving Ultramarines maybe two out of five for how, for for the changes there, I think this I think these are kind of like I think for Necrons I'm I'm I think this is like a might be like a five out of five change overall. Certainly a four out of five. Really really happy with the Necron changes. Well done. All right, next up, let's take a look at the Adepta Sororitas, aka Sisters of Battle. Uh, the Righteous Repungent, which is Morven's talent. The Le Morven is obviously the legionary, leg legend warlord, English. Uh, change description, uh, essentially where it used to give plus one melee and plus one range. Uh, it now gives plus two melee and plus two range if we have four faith. Love this kind of scaling with the faith. It's obviously something we saw with Junif. Honestly... Marvin needed something because she was falling behind. She was actually probably the worst uh, warlord out of the three, I think. And um, yeah, that's that's actually pretty nice. That's actually pretty nice. Um, plus two plus two is a lot if you've got a wide board. Um, the only thing is, is that Marvin doesn't tend to build lots of units, right? She's more of a kind of like removal lord. So whether that has anti-synergy or not, but Kind of in it, on its own, that's that's a powerful change. Prayer. Uh, what they've done with the prayer, which was a card that was used a lot, it costs two energy, and it says, give shield to a friendly unit if it has the prey, gain one faith. What's great about that is before it used to be, if the unit prays, then you give one faith. Now you don't need to pray. So in other words, you can stick this on your warlord, and your warlord can still attack with the shield, and it'll still get the plus one faith. That's actually a big change. That's actually a big, big deal. Like, it's, this is a shield, guy. So now you can attack. That's a massive change. Um, and putting that on units that can then attack that are like big units. That's massive. That's an absolutely. Imagine putting that on a Celestian. It's got what, what seven attack. It's it's prey. Imagine putting it on this. Right. This has got prey. Now this thing can actually swing for six. With the prayer um, uh, stratagem on it, 
And it just gets the plus one anyway. We don't need to actually pray with this thing and waste its like attack. It can actually attack. That's a really big change, guys. That's a really big change. I I, I really like that change. Uh, it'll speed up as well the whole praying process. Imagifier. Ah, oh, they really want this card to work. Change description from uh, to pray, give plus one attack, uh, melee and range, and flank to a friendly troop. So instead of just giving flank. It gives plus one melee, plus one range. This is a really big... Um, this is this is the card, right? It's got good stats. Um, it's got pretty good stats, actually, for a 5-drop that has a very powerful ability. Um, I think when you, when you have a, a bigger unit that prays, you are going to get attacked rather than you doing the attacking. And so having even points so, so that your opponent can't just choose the lowest and trick the trade is actually a really important combination that you're looking for on big units that want to pray if that makes sense so i, I actually think this guy is well is well statted um and now giving flank and plus one one i think we'll start to see imagifier uh at least at least tried it might actually be a one-off so next up we have got Yeah, next up we've got the Simulacrum Celestium. This is the five drop that gave a permanent plus one to melee and range attack. And uh, that included your Warlord. Now it just does it to all friendly units. Okay, not just the not just the uh, Warlord. Now, this could be really good in a Junith deck, right? Where the Junith deck can go wide, where she can deploy two sisters a turn. Um, yeah, this is, this is pretty good. Um... The only problem with it is, again, it's still got to pray, and if the meta is very tempo heavy, then I just don't see how you can like make that mechanic work. Now, Miraculous Feet is a card I really, really like. Miraculous Feet is the one that we can cast uh, for th um, three energy, and we can make something invulnerable. And I've made several decks go and see my uh, deck guides on, on my invulnerable um, deck. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be really powerful now. What they've basically done is reduce the 5 faith, which extends the invulnerability to your next turn, which is what you need to get with this card. They've changed it to only 3. And that's a massive, massive deal. Uh, this is a... Because it was a bit inconsistent. That was the main downside. Not anymore. I think 3 faith is very reasonable for that. That's a really powerful effect. The Celestium Secrescen is the 6-drop Vanguard. Really good change, this. Instead of praying and getting an extra armor when it's already got armor, it's got heal 3 to a friendly unit. Now, if you compare this to a friend, uh, a Blade Guard veteran that the Space Marines have, they just heal themselves and on Codex, so they don't have to not attack, which you do, obviously, to pray uh, in this case. So it's still not as good as that, I don't think. Although the difference here is that this just says heal three to a friendly unit. So you can choose where you want the three. It doesn't have to be on himself. It can be on the Warlord. That could be really powerful, by the way. Like saving the Warlord, Vanguard comes down, and then next turn it can kind of heal the Warlord. It's it's a good change. The Beacon of Faith uh, is the same as it was, except for it's got an extra step now, which is if you've got three Faith, it will give an extra one health instead of uh, just the, the, the two. So I think this is a, a card that's been pushed as a stratagem and it's going to be played an awful lot. It was already pretty good. It's going to be really good in Junith decks, right, where things are going wide. When you've only need three faith to give plus three health to all your units, and that includes your Warlord, by the way. That's a superb card. It was already a good card, but it's a superb card now. And the Death Cult Assassin, finally we've seen some love for the three drops. Uh, I'd like to see a bit more, if I'm honest with you. But the Death Cult Assassin goes up in health from a three to a four. And that's actually quite a big deal when you consider its penitence ability to deal two damage to a random enemy. I think we're much more likely to get two procs off now with this. And uh, oh. I think you would now play this in a Morven deck at least. Maybe in some, maybe even in an Erika deck. But um, I think the Death Cult Assassin is much, much better. Camouflage was always nice, but the stats were shocking. I don't even know if four's enough. It, it maybe should have gone to five, but... Uh, you know, I think that's a positive change. So, yeah. Let's see how we get on. Uh, so that is it for the sisters overall. 
not quite as impressive as the Necron changes, but better than... Uh, I like them more than the Ultramarine ones. I think... Um, in terms of what I think is really meaningful there, I think the Miraculous Feat is going to be very powerful. I think Prayer is going to be incredibly powerful. And I think Beacon's going to be good. I think they're the main ones. The others might still not see play, to be honest. Um, but uh, we're slowly getting there with the sisters, right? Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Might go back to my invulnerable Eric deck uh, and see see uh, what we can do with that. All right. Uh, next up, we've got the Tau Empire. Now, they've changed the war shape, which is the new warlord. Thank God. They've given it a little bit of a buff, which is that every time it strikes, and of course, it's always going to get strike off, right? Because war warlords don't die until they actually die and the game's over. So, uh, basically, every time he attacks, encouraging aggro player, heal one. So, if you've got to attack five times with a warship in the game, you, you're essentially a 35 health warlord. And it still has the grizzly feast, so you can still essentially strike to heal and then use grizzly feast to heal again. So, warshaper is shaping up. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, shaping up to be um, much better. Um, the key thing now will be finding the best deck around him. I'm definitely still testing stuff with that. I don't think the warshaper is going to be... Uh, the Tau's best Warlord, quite frankly. Um, but definitely much more interesting. Alright, let's get on to High Fleet Leviathan, the Tyranids. The Ravenous Hunter is the incredible stratagem that essentially gives everything blood first so that it can attack twice. Obviously, you put that on a Synapse creature. Your Swarm Lord can attack twice as well as the units. Uh, they've basically just increased the cost from 4 to 5. Yeah, long overdue. I don't think it'll make much difference, to be honest. Um... Because you generally would play this when you've got 7, 8 energy anyway. So I don't think it's really going to matter. But I do think it's a good, good that they've at least tried to do something to make it a bit, <laughs> a bit more costly. Next one is Harpy. Change description to flying when an enemy attacks, deploy a spore mine. This one's worth having a look at. So the Harpy is a card that was very, very rarely played, and it used to say when a friendly spore mine dies, deploy another. Now it's uh, completely changed that when the opponent attacks, it basically deploys a spore mine. Now with 8 health and flying, you, you're going to need to get attacked, unless your opponent's using a kind of removal spell. They're going to need to attack you 2 or 3 times, and that's going to pull out 2 or 3 spore mines. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Kind of gives it like a, it's an interesting kind of like inbuilt defense or counter. Um, will I see, do I think it will be played at seven? Probably not. Probably not still. But it's interesting and I'm glad that we're seeing some buffs to these big useless units. The next one is the Neurogon. Neurogon is very interesting because they've reduced the melee attack. Um... And the cost to one. So let's have a look at this. Yeah, Neurogon. Here it is. Not really a played card. But what they've done is they've made it now only one uh, one cost and one melee attack. They've also got rid of Tide 4 and made it only Tide 2. But they haven't changed the health. So what it means is that you can swarm up two of them. You can have two, 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 two health drops, or you can swarm up two of them and have, for two energy, you would have a, you'd have this stat line here. You'd have a two melee, no range, um, but you'd have four health, synapse creature. So kind of what it's done is it's given it a niche. It's basically a bit like, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Neuraloid now. It's like a slightly more expensive, but slightly more survivable. It's like a slight, the bigger brother of the Neuraloid. Overall, I think it's a good change um, because, like I said, it had no place in the game before, and now it, I could see it having that. Uh, we've got now a two drop that has a really solid uh, side. So you can actually play that on the first turn, play that out. I think it's a good change. The hardened biology has was absolutely broken. The hardened biology, in my opinion, was potentially the best, if not top three cards in the Tyranid faction. Um, 
what they've done is just turned down the health buff. So instead of uh, plus two, plus plus two, plus two in terms of armor and health, it's now plus two armor and plus one health. It's still a good card. It's still going to see play. And the Barbagon, which was unplayable and never played, has just increased from three to four uh, health. Um, do I think it'll be played? No. But it is much better now in draft and like for beginner decks, it, you could definitely put them in and it'd be okay. But top of the meta, it's not going to make a change. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we have got some Eldar changes. Long, long overdue. Let's see what we have. First of all, the Path of the Seer, the Anvia Keltok talent, has lowered the cost from 2 to 1. Excellent change. Super happy to see that. I really, really think that um, Anvia needed that, and I think it's fair to make that change. As you know, as the, the powers crept a little bit since the game was released, I think Anvia's fallen behind. And he's got a really fun and interesting ability. It's not massively impactful directly, but it rewards like longer term planning and skillful play. And I, I like decks that do that. So I think this is a fantastic change. Um, and I'm really keen to do some testing again with Anvir. Now the Fire Dragon has increased its blast from three to four. Absolutely irrelevant, never gonna see play, never did see play. Increased its blast was not the problem. It's not going to see play. It's a terrible change. Warlock Skyrunner, they've just made it a bit more consistent. So instead of doing 1 to 3 damage when it picks up a stone, it does 2 to 3. That's a good change, like making things a bit more consistent. I do think the Skyrunner will see play in some decks. I don't know that it will become a meta card, but it, I think that consistency changes. It was already a decent card, but now it's... Yeah, that's pretty good. Dire Avenger XR, increased range from 2 to 3 and Shuriken from 2 to 3. So, uh, for those of you who probably don't know, because you probably don't see this card ever, uh, it's a 6-drop. Um, basically, it's now got 3 range attack. So, yeah, it's just a little bit a little bit better on the trade. I, I like that. I like the 6-3 much, much more than 6-2. I think it's a big difference. I still think 6 health is not great. But this is a tech card anyway, right? Like, playing this to deal with... Um, uh stealth and camouflage uh it's not going to be a standard can deck but it will get teched in when we ha when we have very heavy stealth and camouflage metas maybe as a one-off i'd kind of like the, the shuriken's a bit used i'd kind of like to see it say something like give shuriken one to other units or something so it can just have something that's a bit more immediate on its presence but it doesn't so uh very very niche play it might see but um yeah the falcons increase health from six to seven i really don't think it's going to make a difference this is the one that does shuriken three so it has nothing on turn it arrives i guess having seven health means that it's got a little bit more chance of surviving but i don't think it'll get played the fire prism on the other hand excellent change change the description to uh deal three damage which it already does but if the target has armor deal six damage instead very very interesting and i think the community feedback has gone through on this uh very in theme and we have nothing in the game that deals with armor we have no armor busting units and it looks like this is the first experiment i will definitely play this uh in the seven drop space i think this is a great change i think armor is very prevalent in the game and i like this card design it reminds me of the um five drop that the, the six drop that they've got that also does six damage to flyers this is quite a nice theme they could extend this theme with eldar a little bit where it does you know some some damage but it does more damage against targeted things i think that kind of precision approach is really good for eldar winged autark has increased from five to seven on range attack so now it's a seven seven and seven health it's a powerhouse the winged autark is absolutely excellent if you are running uh those uh, those flyers, then, yep, yeah, this is a superb card. The Wraithlord's melee and range attack has gone up from 7 to 8. Still never going to see play. Absolutely pointless. It's, when are we going to learn this lesson? Like, these big units, the, the, the reason they're not being played is nothing to... You, you, could, you could make this a 2020. It still wouldn't be played. The Avatar of Cain has gone up from 7 to 9 health. I mean... No. <laughs> uh, again, um, people will definitely try him. They will. They will try him, and they will fail. Um, here's Mr. Avatar. You know, they're one of the most iconic units in the faction. It's so sad that this card's so bad. Um, does nothing. The problem is, it costs nine energy. It does nothing. You put it on the board. It does nothing. Next turn, you lose the game. I mean, it's just. 
it's just pointless. Um, really disappointing that we didn't see some sort of rally effect. Uh, they've given it 9 health. Yep, yeah, it's harder to kill. Great. What's he play? Oh, that's sad. That's sad. One day avatar. Now, Fire and Fade, I'm really interested in, guys. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I made a deck around this card. I literally called the deck Fire and Fade on the thumbnail. Go check it out, and I will be returning to that because I think this is very powerful now. Uh, what they've basically... If you look at the Fire and Fade ability, um, what it basically did... Uh, was it a one drop? Or minus one? What? Where's Fire and Fade? Oh my god. Here we go. Right, so basically it said return a friendly troop to your hand. And what I used to do is, you, you can imagine something like uh, a Wind Rider. It comes on, it does damage, and it has one health left. And then you, you bring it back, basically. Because it's getting its value on the flank. Now it costs two less, guys. It can cost zero. This is this is really good. This is this is now I think a staple in Eldar decks. Like I think this is a really really powerful um, stratagem for one energy, and very in theme. Love it. I love that. I love that change. I think that's a great change. The Cosmic Serpent. Uh, now, for two stones, repeats the effect. Now, the Cosmic Serpent says, essentially trigger all of the Spirit Stone uh, abilities that are on the board. I think there is a really good combo, which I'm going to finish on. So, very quickly, I'll just talk about the Inspiring Legacy. Inspiring Legacy say, is, is a stratagem. Sorry, it's a defense card. And it basically uh, says, give Shuriken 2 to a friendly unit, which it used to give shuriken one and did nothing uh probably still won't get chosen but hey ho right the cosmic serpent let's just quickly check on that and then we'll finish i have a really good combo that i want to test and i think it's going to be nice in the anvia keltok build as well so we already saw that anvia has got cheaper that's pretty cool um so if we go on to eldar we get the three seven drops so basically what i'm thinking is we can play host of the dead right so for 10 energy if you think about like a rock invasion costing 10 the 10 energy now as a finish we can play host of the dead fill the board with wraith guards and then we play cosmic serpent Ah, but we would have used all the stones, wouldn't we, on the first part? Well, we can still play Cosmic Serpent and trigger this once. So, you'd have a board full of these with plus two range. So, they'd be five range and they'd be six health. Then next turn, if you can get stones up, you could play it again. And you could buff this by another four. So, it would go up to... These would be nine and these would be... 10 health yeah there's something in that combo that could be really really powerful as a finisher so we'll see all right so that is the changes i mean overall i do think that um the eldar i think anvia is going to be kind of interesting i think the fire prism is probably the big one along with the fire and the fade though i think they're the two that are going to change the kind of deck building a little bit um, nice, because the Fire Prism's a bigger unit, so it gives Eldar finally an, an, an option at the kind of higher end a little bit, which they, which they desperately need. So, um, I think I think Eldar are going to be in a pretty decent position, given what's happening to, um, to the Ultramarines. Um, Tyranids not hurt that badly, to be honest, so I think they should still be strong. Um... I'm still not convinced sisters are going to be there, if I'm honest. Although, I do think Junis is going to be much better now that the um, the Ultramarines have been placated. I think the exciting one is actually Necrons, you know. I think um, these changes are really interesting and I can't wait to kind of like see what we do. Let me know in the comments what you think to these changes. Um, which you think are good, which you think are bad. If any things you kind of agree with, we mine. Um, and yeah, if you haven't checked out my video on the new ranking ladder system, 
go and check that out now. Until then, take it easy, guys. I'll see you on the ladder.